Welcome to your preview of some new QB ones presented by Prize Picks. That's right. We got some quarterbacks that are either making their debut as the starting quarterback in week one, or they're making their debut on a new team as a starting quarterback in week one, or they are officially the starter now after winning a competition. And now they get to be QB1, even though they've started games before, but now they are the guy. We've got three guys to talk about. The first one has never played a college game before. He will be taking his first snap on Saturday. It is the guy that the whole state of Nebraska can't stop talking about, Dylan Riola. Can Dylan Riola give Nebraska a dynamic passing game? That's the big question. If he can, you can combine that with a very good defense, and suddenly that bowl drought looks like it goes bye-bye. Remember, they have not played a bowl game since the 2016 season. Beyond that, you probably get pretty competitive in the Big Ten. But can Dylan Riola do that? And that's the big question. This is a team that had five one-possession losses last year. Not once. Well, let's let's go back. So if you like to play prize picks, which the best fantasy game in America, you download the prize picks app, you use the code staples, you play $5, you get $50 instantly. So the way it works is you pick squares and you, you pick two or more squares. The more squares you pick, the higher the potential payout. The Dylan Riola passing yard square for the game against UTEP on Saturday is 243 and a half yards. And you decide if he's going to throw for more than that or less than that. How many times, trivia question here, how many times did Nebraska throw for more than 243 and a half yards last year? Zero. How many times did Nebraska throw for more than 200 yards last year? Zero. None. If Dylan Riola is that dude, if he is throwing for more than 243 and a half yards for 250 yards for 300 yards. This team's going to be a lot better. This team will not lose all those one possession games, but we don't know because he's a true freshman making his first start. We have no idea at this point, but I think there's a lot of people in Nebraska banking on Dylan Rilo being that guy, being able to do that. Well, we, we, we've seen the spring game. That's it. So it may be a leap of faith this week. And we'll see what happens against UTEP as he gets ready to face Colorado next week. But 243 and a half. If it's more than, get real excited, Nebraska fans. Now a guy who was a starting quarterback somewhere else last year, but is a starting quarterback somewhere new this year. It is Kyle McCord. He's at Syracuse now. He was at Ohio State last year. Quite a difference. Quite a difference in personnel. Quite a difference in level of competition. A lot changes for Kyle McCord. Now, his prize pick square number is 237.5 passing yards. They're playing against Ohio U. Syracuse is a radically different roster. Fran Brown comes in as the coach. He went big in the transfer portal. He's trying hard to recruit guys out of high school that are a, a different caliber than what Syracuse has been recruiting. And it's interesting because Kyle McCord will have more options than Syracuse's quarterbacks had last year. But he will not have more options than he had at Ohio State last year. So that prize picks number, 237 and a half yards. Well, Kyle McCord threw for more than that nine times in 12 games last year. But he had Marvin Harrison. He had a Mecca Buka. He had Colonel Tate. He had Cade Stover. He had a lot to work with. What does he have to work with at Syracuse? That's the big question. Aronde Gadsden, probably the most dynamic pass catcher returning from the Orange roster before. And he's a big receiver slash tight end. You've also got Dan Villari the tight end who had to finish the season at quarterback last year. But those two guys could be reliable targets. A guy to watch, Zeed Haynes. So he is a transfer from Georgia, which is where Fran Brown, the new Syracuse head coach, worked last year. This guy was the MVP of their spring game. 
They're very excited about what he can do. He was a big time recruit, didn't play much at Georgia last year, but obviously they're pretty deep at receiver. So can Zed Haynes have a breakout season? Does he give Kyle McCord somebody to throw to? And the other big question that'll be different from Ohio State, can that Syracuse offensive line protect Kyle McCord? It was not graded very high by PFF last year. They do return four starters, but there are questions about how much Kyle McCord will have to move around the pocket. That's not necessarily his strong suit. So this is a big number to have to hit when you don't have the weapons around that you had before. But we will see what Kyle McCord looks like in a different uniform. Our next new QB1 started USC's last game. Miller Moss played in the bowl game against Louisville and was awesome. Threw for 372 yards and six touchdowns, but he was not just handed the job of replacing former Heisman Trophy winner Caleb Williams. He had to win it. Jaden Maiava, the UNLV transfer, came in, but Miller Moss won the job. He has some young weapons. Zachariah Branch, Deuce Robinson, Jacoby Lane, Makai Lemon. Now, those guys did not other than Branch, have huge contributions as freshmen, but there's a good chance they break out this year too. So how much is Miller Moss going to throw for against LSU? This is the question. His number is big. It's 285 and a half. Now, we trust Lincoln Riley quarterbacks here. We trust Lincoln Riley with quarterbacks here. We trust USC's offense run by Lincoln Riley to be effective, to be potent. What we don't know, is how will Blake Baker, the new defensive coordinator at LSU, how much will his hire change LSU's defense? Their personnel has not changed a ton. It's more going to be scheme. But can they be better than they were last year? If they're not, the more than's going to hit here. Like Miller Moss is going to torch them. Last year, LSU's defense allowed more than that 285 and a half six times. Basically, any time the Tigers played a competent passing game, they got obliterated. Now, they didn't always lose because they had Jaden Daniels on the other side. This time, they got Garrett Nussmeyer. I'm actually pretty confident in LSU's offense here. It's the defense. This could be a shootout here, depending on how much better LSU's defense is. So how much faith do you have in Blake Baker answers the question, do I go more than or less than on Miller Moss? Because if you don't feel like Blake Baker is going to make that big of a difference schematically for LSU's defense, then you go more than. If you think LSU is going to be better on defense, and look, LSU does have some very good players. Like Harold Perkins Jr. is one of the best players in the country. If they use him in a way that allows him to go chase Miller Moss a lot, it could affect Miller Moss. But if they're getting burned in the pass game like they did last year, if they're if they're not much better and they're just – rearranging the the pieces on the board and it's not helping Miller Moss is going to hit that more than don't know that means that USC's defense is going to stop anybody but it means USC is still going to keep score thank you so much for watching just a reminder subscribe to this channel right here so you never miss an episode of Andy Staples on three and oh by the way watch all the other great videos on the On3Sports YouTube channel.